Johnny Dollar. Up and at him, Johnny. Huh? Who's that? Bert McGraw. Oh, hi, Bert. What's on your mind? Haley's Comet. What? Harry Haley, pitcher for the Spartans. They call his fastball Haley's Comet. Oh, yeah, sure. Great guy. Reminded me of a cross between schoolboy Rowe and Bob Feller. Sure too bad about him and the Spartans. Breaks my heart. Oh, why? Well, Haley's disappeared. And right in the middle of spring training. Well, maybe he got tired of playing ball. You kidding? A man that pitches like he does is making 60000 bucks a year doing it. Your company hold a policy on him? For 50000 double indemnity. But that's incidental. The Spartans don't stand a chance this year without Haley. You're wrong, Bert. Huh? What about? That policy. A hundred grand's never incidental. <laughs> Exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Providential Assurance Company, 393 Dewey Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the melancholy memory matter. Expense account item one, a dollar and 20 cents taxi from my apartment to Bert McGraw's office. Bert's a large man with a voice to match. Before becoming an insurance agent, he played ball with the Bush Leagues and eventually spent a year with the Spartans. He'd never forgotten. Come in, Johnny. Sit down, sit down. Thanks. Sure didn't take you long to get here. No reason why it should. But That's now, why I called you, boy. Always on the ball. Yes, sir. I said to myself, if anyone could get in there and pitch, it's Johnny Dollar. A man with a real batting average and just what the job needs. Yeah, sure. So what's the catch? Find Haley. That's what. Find Haley. Dead or alive. Only I sure hope it's alive. Dead, he wouldn't be much good to the Spartans. Or your company, who'd have to pay out at least 50 grand. Huh? Or have you forgotten about that? Oh, good gravy. No, I'm a company man first, last, and always. In fact, I'm the bird who sold Haley that policy. What was that? About six months ago, the day me and the boys at the Lions gave him a testimonial dinner. Who's the beneficiary? Well, the original beneficiary was Haley's sister. Her name's Mildred Womack, lives in Omaha. Oh, did Haley change the beneficiary? Yeah. Who figures to collect now? His wife. Uh, her his name. Wife. Papers didn't say anything about him being married. I know. Well, it happened recently. Since he's been in Tucson for spring training with the rest of the team. Oh well, maybe he's on his honeymoon. Not Haley. Why not? Because, like I said, the team's been in spring training. Last week they started playing exhibition games. Haley wouldn't miss those for anything in the world. And according to Slats Lewis, he's the Spartan manager. Haley was going to stand up against the Red Legs last Wednesday. But nobody's seen him since Tuesday night. Almost a week. Yeah, sure it is. But it's still no sign he isn't taking a little vacation. Oh, Johnny, come on. This man's an athlete. A precision machine built to pitch baseballs. Did you know he started playing when he was eight years old? Loves the game. Huh? Yes, sir. And he doesn't think of anything ever except playing it. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Hmm? He got married, didn't he? Oh. Oh, well, you know what I mean. Okay, Bert. Well, what do you got to go on? Well, uh, maybe I got it right here. What's that? A telegram came in late yesterday. Here, yeah, read it. Uh, feel sure my brother Harry Haley has been murdered. Please conduct thorough investigation before settling any claim on his estate. Signed Mildred Womack. Hmm. Where did you say she was? Well, she lives in Omaha, but that wire came from Tucson. You have her address out there? Yeah. I'd better have a talk with her. That's the way I'd play it. And Johnny, yeah. me and the Spartans, and of course the company, are counting on you. You get a hit, okay? Coach, I'll do my best. <laughs> Expense account item two, ten cents for an afternoon paper. It contained a follow-up story on Haley's disappearance with a quote from his sister Mildred. But again, there was no mention of Haley's wife. Item three, one hundred and forty-eight dollars air travel to Tucson and cab fare to the Westerner Hotel. I called the Casa Grande Motel where Mildred Womack was staying, then rented a car and drove out to it. It was on the highway to Nogales, and she was waiting for me. A tall, thin woman, obviously Haley's older sister. 
I followed her in and sat down on a stiff chair between the bed and the dresser. You ever see Harry play, Mr. Dollar? No, ma'am. I'm afraid that's something I've missed. Oh. Well, this is his picture in case you want to know what he looks like. Oh, I've seen pictures of him in the papers and newsreels, Mrs. Mormack. Handsome man, ain't he? And famous. Too famous. All that publicity about his new contract, that's what started the trouble. What do you mean? If he'd never reached the big leagues, he'd be alive today. Do you really believe he's dead? Of course I do. Did you read my telegram? Oh, yes, ma'am. But do you have any proof of his death? That's all I need. Would you mind telling me what it is? The record of my brother's doings before I came to Arizona. Oh? I didn't get out here until the day before he disappeared. I came because Harry wasn't writing to me like he was supposed to, so I hired me a detective to find out what he was doing with his time. You hired a detective to follow your brother? There's no law against it. No. Especially when I suspected something was wrong. Yeah, I've had to watch out for Harry since our pa died 12 years ago. How old is your brother? 25. That's physically. But he's still a baby. Mrs. Womack, about this proof you have... I'll get to it. See, before Harry signed up with the Spartans, he never had nothing. And after last year, well, now they're paying him a heap of money. Naturally, a man like him, simple and all, why well, he was just like a ripe melon waiting for some little chippy to come along and pick him off the vine, which is just what happened. Then you know he's married. Of course I know, but I wouldn't have known if it hadn't been for that detective, Mr. Oglethorpe. You know why he kept his marriage a secret? Sure. Same reason I've tried to keep it one. What's that? Well, now, would you have gone around broadcasting it if you'd woke up some morning and found yourself hitched to a person called Juanita Torres? I don't know. Never met the lady. She ain't no lady, Mr. Dollar. Torres, Mexican. So? Well, you know. Afraid I know. Oh, no. Well, this Juanita, she was a nightclub dancer, she called it. That's what Oglethorpe told you? That's right. The way I figure it, Harry must have been good and drunk to let her talk him into marrying her. Have you met her? Huh. I hope not. And don't plan to, neither. Well, well, don't you think that's being a little unfair, Mrs. Womack? I don't need to. I got all the information I needed from Mr. Oglethorpe's report. Little gold digger. That's what she is. A horrible, cheap, painted dancing girl. You're sure of that? I am. As soon as she could, she had Harry Chambers' life insurance, making her the beneficiary. And that was like putting a gun in her hand. And you think she had something to do with his disappearance? It's murder. It ain't no death That's a very serious charge, Mrs. Womack. But she's serious. Mister, Harry didn't run off. Believe me. He had no reason to. There was no reason for him to up and leave without telling anybody. You're sure of that? You'll find the reason. I've changed my mind. When I finally got away from Mildred Womack, I headed cross town to the Oglethorpe Detective Agency. Uh... Mr. Oglethorpe wasn't in, so I left work for him to call me, then stopped by Tucson's police headquarters. Lieutenant Snyder was in his office eating his lunch out of a paper bag. All right, come in, come in, pull up the chair. Thanks, Lieutenant. Do you like hard-boiled eggs? Sometimes. Me too, sometimes, but not every day like my wife thinks I do. You want it? No, thanks. Me either. Sergeant tells me you hear about that Haley case. Yeah, that's right. That's not much, but you're welcome to anything we have on it. Well, what do you think's happened to him, Lieutenant? I don't know. When I'm around that sister of his, I'm convinced he's been murdered. And I start thinking about it logically. Yeah. Well, if he was murdered, where's his car for instance? That missing, too? It sure is. Bright new red convertible. Well, if you've got the license, it shouldn't be too hard to find. And like Haley shouldn't be, either. Face as well known as his, you'd think somebody'd spot him. Tell her we got an all-points bullet out on both sides of the border, but so far, nothing. Just how far is the border from here, Lieutenant? About an hour's drive. Could be down there someplace. Yeah, but like his sister said, why would he leave his team, his friends, his sister, all of them, without even a goodbye? <sighs> now it's got me. What's his wife say? Oh, didn't you know? No, what? She's gone, too. Disappeared the same day Haley did. The Spartans were playing an exhibition game that afternoon, so after telling Lieutenant Snyder where I was staying and asking him to call me if anything broke, I drove out to the ballpark. You know, there's a saying in baseball, if anybody knows a pitcher, it's the man who catches for him. And the Spartan catcher was Crawfish Crawford. 
After the game, I sent word into him. A few minutes later, we're standing in the Steamfield locker room. I figured one of you insurance men be showing up. You knew about his policy, huh, Crawford? Crawford shall do. Yeah, every man on the team knew about it. We've been after him to get something like that, start saving his money. Uh, hand me that towel, will you? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Now, what was it you wanted for me to tell you? Anything you can about Haley's disappearance. Well, there ain't nothing much to tell. Well, uh, did you see him at all the day he disappeared? Sure. He was my roommate. This was our second year together. Real nice boy. Picked up his clothes, showered every day, didn't snore. Are any of his clothes missing? No, nothing. He even left his raisin brush behind him. What about his wife? Why? Oh, now don't tell me you didn't know he was married. Well? Wasn't much he didn't tell me. But when he'd tell me something he didn't want talked about, I always told him I wouldn't open my mouth to nobody. Don't figure on doing it now. But it's no secret. The afternoon papers are playing his marriage up big. Well, then I reckon it's all right. What sort of a girl was or is she? I only saw her one time. Reckon she seemed nice enough, but you can never tell about a woman. Boy, I remember one time down Beaumont, Texas, there was this gal, and she looked so sweet, but what she done to me, who we... Yeah, well, let's get back to Haley. How was he doing this year? Well, it was off, way off. But being in love like he was, well, that can hurt any man's control. Are you sure being in love was the only thing bothering him? I don't know what else could have been. But if I think of something, I'll let you know. Okay, Crawfish. I couldn't make up my mind about Crawfish. I didn't know if he'd held out on me or if he just didn't have any information that would help me find Haley. I drove back to my hotel, put the car in the parking lot, and then started across the lobby when somebody called to me. Hey, Dollar! Johnny Dollar! Hi, yeah? Oh, Lieutenant Snyder. Took a chance on your being here. I received a call from the Nogales police this afternoon. They find Haley? No. It looks like your sister's been right all along. How so? Mexican Highway Patrol found his car abandoned about 30 miles below Nogales. Well, that doesn't mean he's been killed. No, but there's something else that does. What? It was dried blood on the front seat. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars. And behind each star, there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Vermont state flag, in its early form, imitated our national flag, uniquely bearing 17 stripes and 17 stars, with only the inscribed word Vermont to distinguish it. The good people of Vermont assumed, as did our national government, that stripes as well as stars would be added as each new state entered the Union. Vermont entered the Union after Tennessee and Ohio, and with Kentucky to join shortly, the Vermonters naturally put 17 stripes on their flag. In 1818, the United States Congress put a stop to this, and since then, the stripes have always been at 13, and only stars are added for each new state. Vermont's present flag captures the famous beauty of the Green Mountain State in its coat of arms, and inscribed is the phrase, Vermont, freedom and unity. Vermont state flag, the flag of the 14th state to enter the Union, was adopted on April 26, 1923. Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the melancholy memory matters. After Lieutenant Snyder told me about the Mexican police finding Haley's car abandoned below the border, I asked if he was going down there. He said it was out of his jurisdiction. And besides, he felt the Mexican police could do as well as he could. Snyder left, and I crossed to the desk to pick up my key and messages. There was one from the Oglethorpe Detective Agency. Upstairs, I called their number. Oglethorpe speaking. Oh, Mr. Oglethorpe, this is Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes, Dollar. I'm sorry I missed you this morning. Well, it wasn't important. I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. About Haley? About Mrs. Haley. Oh, what kind of question? Well, what kind of person is she? How do you mean? 
Do you think she married Haiti for his money? I don't think nothing. I don't get paid for thinking. Just for reporting what I see. Well, what have you heard about her? You've been in the place where she worked, haven't you? Why, sure, but like with everybody, some folks liked her, some didn't. Look at your dollar. You want me to do your job for you, fine, but you've got to come up with some cash. I might, but you can answer this one. Try me. Where's she from? What's her hometown? <laughs> Easy. place called Magdalena. About 50 miles below the Mex border. Things were beginning to add up, but the total didn't look too good for Haley. Or for his wife, either. And as much as I hated believing it, it did look as if Haley's sister, noted Womack, was right when she said the Mexican girl her brother had married was responsible for his disappearance. I called out for a drink and was getting ready to take a shower when somebody pounded on the door. This, uh... Yeah, come in. It's unlocked. Just put it on... Oh, crawfish. Yeah. Well, come in, sit down. No, no, I can't stay long. I'm going out to eat with the rest of the gang. Well? Well, I've been thinking, and I figure you might be able to make something out of this. Out of what? I'm breaking my promise to Harry by telling you. Go on. Well... He's been going to a doctor here. Oh? I can tell you no more than that. Oh, come on now. At least give me the doctor's name. It's Wolf with a knee. Wait a minute. Wolf with a knee. What are you doing? Looking it up in the phone book. Well, you can't call tonight. It's after office hours. I'm just curious to see if there is such a doctor. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Yeah. Yeah, I trust you, Crawfish. Is it here? Let's see. Yeah, Dr. George M. Wolf. Specializing. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. Thanks, Crawfish. You've given me the one thing I had to know. By the time I had the car checked over and filled with gas, it was about 8.30. The sign over the office of Casa Grande Motel served to light the whole court. Mrs. Womack's bungalow was dark, but I knocked on the door anyway. Yes? Who is it? Johnny Dollar. Mrs. Womack. I'm sorry if I woke you up this evening. Yes, it is. I've been tripping with things. About Harry. But Dennis Snyder told me they found his car. There's blood on the seat. Like I knew all along. Mrs. Womack, I wouldn't give up hope if I were you. I gave up hope when I heard he'd married that girl. And if I ever get my hands on her, I'll... Do you remember telling me this morning that if I could find a reason for Harry wanting to get away from everyone, to disappear, you'd change your mind about his wife? I remember. Well, I have that reason. What is it? I'll tell you late tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon? Yes, ma'am. Provided you'll be ready to leave here with me at 8 in the morning. Leave for where? A little town south of the border. It's called Magdalene. It's 65 miles from Tucson to Nogales. We made it in an hour. But from there on, the road became progressively worse. It was early afternoon when we reached the outskirts of Magdalene. Oh, really, Mr. Dollar, I wish you'd tell me what we're doing down here. I'll tell you when I'm sure, Mrs. Womack. You mean, this may be a wild goose chase. It may be, but I don't think so. Oh, really? Oh, you'd think they'd have sense enough to keep their chickens at home. You don't care much for the Mexican people, do you, Mrs. Womack? No, I don't. Why not? You know... I sure do, because they're so poor and dirty. By our standards, I guess some of them are poor. But as for being dirty, have you ever seen American ditch diggers or farmers after a hard day's work? Well, what about their children? They're always filthy, like those over there. Huh? Where? In that field. You see them? Yeah. Yeah, I sure do. Mr. Dollar, what are you doing? Be right back. But, Mr. Dollar... Hey, Sonny. Sonny. What's that? Uh, Come over here a minute. Uh, uh, come. Yeah, that's right. Do you uh, understand English? Uh, American? Good. Uh, who ever taught you how to play baseball? Uh, you do not know, too. 
too good for you. Yeah, I see. You have five bases out there. Well, yesterday, for the first time, she came and explained to us. I am sure there's five bases. No? No. Oh, it does not matter to you. We are grateful for what she gave to us for the, um, how do you say it? Oh, 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 The bat. She is the bat. And the gloves. Uh, the gloves. Well, who is this lady? What's her name? What is her name? What? She's the one who's daughter. Do you know where she lives? Oh, she's the one with her father. You want me to show the way? Yes, I'm. That'd be fine. Tori's family home was a large, rambling ranch house made of red brick and tile. I parked the car near the front door and we got out. I still hadn't told Mildred Womack why we were there. I only told her whose house it was. A servant escorted us into the living room, then left us alone. Really? Really, Mr. Dollar? Yeah? What is it now? Don't you understand how I feel? You think I can face these Tori's people after that business? Think of her daughter and get away with my brother. Your brother hasn't been done away with, Mrs. Well, you aren't really sure of that. I'm not sure of anything. Whose blood did they find on the front seat of his car? Why not ask him? Him? Your brother. He's standing there in the doorway right behind you. Harry. Hello, Mildred. Oh, Harry. Hey. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so very glad. Are you? Oh, why, of course, I thought. All of the things I thought. Best. Now, you hurry and get your things together, dear. We'll let Mr. Dollar drive us back to civilization. I'm not going back, Mildred. What? I hoped you'd never find me. But, Harry, why? Oh, I've been so worried about you. I wanted to get away from you for good, Mildred. What? I'll never forget the things you said to me about Juanita. Oh, Harry, after oh, all... They made me sick, you hear? You know what she did, mister? She invited me over to dinner, not me and my wife, just me. Last Tuesday night. Yeah. And when I got there, and I should have known what she had in the back of her mind, she tried everything she could to get me to leave Juanita, including calling me names and telling me what a dirty, sneaking detective had found out about Juanita. It was all true. Even if it was true, who cares what she did before we were married or what I did? Hey, you shouldn't talk to me like this after all the things I've done for you. Oh, now, don't give me that routine, Mildred. I'm sick of it. Ever since I was a kid. But I did everything for you, even after you grew up. Sure. And even tagging along every year to spring training to see that I behaved like a nice little boy. Harry, Harry. Well, ain't it the truth? But I had to protect you, Harry. Uh, Don't you understand? You're all I have. You can get a husband. And have him leave me like Joe did. Joe left you because you were so busy making a fuss over me and never had time to even cook his meals. Oh, Harry. Oh, Harry, please. You. Your name, Dollar? That's right. Insurance investigator. We thought perhaps you... We met up with an accident, huh? Yeah. What about that blood in your car? Hit a chicken on the way down here. Crew were a little tight by then. Thought the blood would make it look like we'd been killed. Nobody come looking for us. Why didn't you take your clothes? Two reasons. When we left Tucson that night, we... Hadn't planned on disappearing. What's the other one? Mildred bought most of them for oh, me. Oh, Harry, don't hurt me, please. I, I couldn't stand it if I, if I thought you were... Get out of here, no, Dollar. No, no, I won't leave. Go on no. back to Omaha, Mildred. Back to your roses and your cats. I never want to see you again. Harry! <laughs> Oh, Max, I guess we've done it. Mr. Dollar, have I been wrong all this time? Selfish. Pero, senor, senor. Yes? Senor, senora. I am Juanita Torres, really. You are... I, I know how you must feel about me, senora, but please, I, I cannot help it if I love your brother. You really love him, even as you do. More. And you must have feel too bad to, 
too angry for what he had said. See, he is not well. He is not well. I do not know all of it, but he has had very bad news from the doctor in Tucson. Oh, no. He's oh. very upset. I am sure he will forgive you when he is better. When there is better news. I... <sighs> Thank you. Thank you for telling me. Juanita? Juanita! Come in, querido. Lovely girl, isn't she? Yeah. Hey, hey, you see her, senor? She's just left. Yeah, yeah, we saw her, thanks. Uh, five faces. Can you tell her that that was them? No. No, that's something you'll have to do. Oh, oh I will. Adios. Mr. Dollar. In Tucson last night. You said you knew the reason for Harry wanting to disappear. But you couldn't have known what he said just now. I learned he's been going to a doctor in Tucson. A specialist. Diseases of the eye. What? I called the doctor before we left Tucson this morning. He told me your brother is losing his sight. What? He's going blind. Some people, you just can't fix. Motored Womack stayed on in Magdalena. Yeah, she rented a small adobe house and did what she could to help her less fortunate neighbors. Harry Healy never played ball again. But he retained enough of his sight to show the Junior Magdalena Spartans the difference between four bases and five. Expense account total, including car rental, hotel bill, incidentals, and transportation back to Hartford, $579.12. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, three of the most unforgettable characters I've ever met. And believe it or not, a case that solves itself. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. Written by Charles B. Smith, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Lillian Byeff, Richard Beale, Barney Phillips, Frank Nelson, Harry Bartell, Dick Crenna, and Lawrence Dobkin. Musical supervision is by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking.